going on, guys? Chase with Venture Sports Consulting, ChaseWins.com. Coming here to talk to you a little bit about <clears throat> the NBA draft tomorrow, the 18th of November. It's still Tuesday, but this video will probably be posted the morning of Wednesday. So let's break this game down a little bit because I've gotten a lot of this game, this situation down a little bit. I've gotten a lot of questions about it. I always talk about drafts. Honestly, was not going to post anything about the NBA draft this year. Um, I was so disappointed in the way the NBA handled their return um, and the messaging that they brought to the world and where they, I mean, basically said they stood. Um, I, I've said this a couple of times. I try not to get into it too much. The whole social justice warrior thing, I'm, I'm not in favor of. Um, social justice is one thing. Um, but the way that the media and leagues and just certain people and organizations are going about it is utterly ridiculous. Um, to say that the NBA, of all people, doesn't stand for um, African Americans in you know a 98% African American dominated sports league is just, I mean, it's comical. It's laughable where it's... It, you know, it's been like that since the 80s. And it's not that that's the biggest part of it. If you want to bring in social justice messaging, I'm okay with that. But the way they went about it to post the BLM stuff on the court to you were ostracized and looked down upon if you stood for the national anthem as a as a black man as a black woman as a as a white man it didn't matter if you stood for your country's national anthem you were looked down upon you were criticized by your teammates your ownership group the league the media and that was just disgusting to me. And the ringleader through all of it was LeBron James, the most, I mean, he's the most beloved athlete on the planet at this point. And it's it's sad for someone that has tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that truly look up to him as, as an idol and as a role model to say some of the things that he said, whereas black people are being hunted and to make everything political and then to place all this blame upon men and women in uniform, police officers. And then when those two officers in LA County were gunned down, basically all, you know, had they not survived, they were, you know, they attempted to be executed and he refused to say anything about it. But when a criminal committing a crime, you know, while committing a crime and committing acts of intended violence where force was used against him, then it's, uh, you know, the world's coming to an end. We're being hunted as a black man. I can't even walk out in the streets. Uh, I mean, come on, man. We all know where you live, who works for you, who your security is. Um, your gardeners, your, you know, your house help. I mean, it, nobody believes the shit you're talking and you don't even believe it. So again, I'm not going to get into all this, but let's talk about some more positive notes because Adam Silver has said that the way they went about it last year would not happen again. So hopefully that's the case. So we can all get back to enjoying NBA basketball. Let's talk about the draft. Now, weeks and months leading up to the draft, I didn't even pay attention to this year's upcoming draft until the season was over. Obviously, this this past season, taking COVID-19 out of everything, there were teams that are now in the top of the draft order that were not expected to be there going into 2020, one of those being the Golden State Warriors, who were in contention for the lottery pick. And look at what Golden State has done since they, they got their first championship uh, back just a few short years ago, and they went on to somewhat create the start of a dynasty with the Splash Brothers and, and Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. You have Draymond Green. Andre Iguodala was there for part of it. Kevin Durant was there for part of it. And they're still a dominant team with a lot, a lot of talent. But, of course, the injuries to Klay Thompson, uh, Draymond in and out, injuries to Steph Curry, they went and they did the smart thing. Um, and I think this was just as much – from a coaching standpoint to the players buying into it to the organization being okay with it, especially when the season came to a grinding halt 
when they decided to come back, it was like, okay, we're not worried about this. We are going to quote unquote tank because look at the talent that we have as a team, as an organization. So look at what we have coming back. We're going to go from somebody to nobody, then from nobody right back into championship talk, which is not something too many teams can often say. And we have the opportunity to now go get high first round draft picks, potentially first overall. That was big for them. Something that Nobody would have, you know, expected going into the season. Um, obviously, the Timberwolves are getting the first overall pick. And from what I've read, I mean, obviously, the, anybody that gets the first overall pick sees opportunity. I think the Minnesota Timberwolves are under quite a bit of pressure with this. Um, what to do? Are they actually going to draft someone they think could be valuable to their team and organization? Or are they looking to potentially draft someone that would be good to use as leverage to move to get somebody else where that that's the big question for so much more for basketball than for baseball or football when you have teams that'll go in and draft like the Cincinnati Bengals didn't want to draft Joe Burrow in hopes that they could leverage him and ship him off because you have a Heisman quarterback and you know the guy that's just so polarizing, wins a national championship, comes in, everybody knows he's going to go first overall. And when that happens, it's not a, oh, let's go get him, see what he can do for a year, then we can leverage him and move him and get something of value in return. No, if you're going to go draft a quarterback first overall, it's either going to be boom or bust. And the Cincinnati Bengals need all the help they can get. So they're hoping they just picked up in a draft pick their next franchise guy, the guy that's going to lead them to the promised land. But in basketball, so many times you have people draft that know that they're probably not drafting the best person that they can. So they want to get somebody that they can leverage. So that's going to be the big question of what happens tonight, I think. Now, Obviously, Lonzo Ball's little brother, LaMelo Ball, he's been, of course, his dad back a few years ago when, when Lonzo was drafted. He was all over. I mean, he was getting more media time than anyone else, talking about all of his kids would play in the NBA, and you know they were all going to be on the same team one day, winning championships. It was all going to be in L.A. Well, what did I tell you? That L.A. was not the fit for Lonzo Ball. I didn't think he should have gone – as high as he did. I don't think he should have gone in the top 10, but has proven to be what I thought he would be. Not a dominant shooter, not a leader, but someone who made players around him better by getting them the ball in the right situations and knowing when and who to feed the ball to. Um, of course, he got shipped off to New Orleans, which again, I don't think was the right spot for him. I think he would have been better off in New York playing for the Knicks, uh, potentially playing for the Bulls in Chicago, or playing for Indiana. Um, and I made that very, very publicly known, my thoughts on it, but you know, what do I know, I guess? So I guess going into tonight's draft, everybody's going to want to know, who do I think is deserving of the number one overall pick, and who do I think will be the number one overall pick? Well... It's one and the same for me. Obviously, the overwhelming betting favorite, like who people are laying money on and have been for the last, really the last 10 days, because up until the last 10 days when the media really started to attack this draft, everybody had LaMelo going third, fourth. Some people had him going second. Nobody actually had him going first overall. And then, of course, when the media gets involved, they hype up who is the better story, you know, who, who's drawing the most eyes. And, of course, if it wasn't for LeVar Ball, his father, I don't know that this kid would even be in draft talks. I don't know that he would be putting his name in the draft. I think he would be playing for some mediocre, uh, small, non-Power 5 school somewhere, uh, having a mediocre college career as a shooter that doesn't do well when he's defended, uh, James Harden. Um, and that's one of the big questions right now. Where's James Harden going to end up? Is he going to stay with Houston? What's what, uh, Westbrook going to do? Harden has already made his... It known that he wants to go to Brooklyn and play with KD. He wants to play with Kyrie. Um, do I think that's a good move for Brooklyn? 
Maybe, but I don't think they can win by adding. There's no team out there that's going to add James Harden and win a championship. That's just not the case. Now, you can take people and put them around James Harden and win. James Harden is not a difference maker. Sure, he can score a lot of points when he's not defended. You can test him at all. He can't score. Um, He can't play. You put him to the, I mean, anybody gets close to him and blinks at him, a foul's called on him. Anybody that goes to the line 90 times a game can score 40 points a game. Everybody is raving that James Harden has gone three seasons straight with averaging 30 points a game. I'm sorry. In the era of basketball I grew up in, that's not impressive to me. You know who I'm impressed by? The greatest to ever do it, Michael Jordan, who averaged that for seven straight seasons, something James Harden will never do. Even in a non, you know, an NBA where defense doesn't exist anymore. Well, let me adjust this, see if we can get some better light out of it. There we go. So, what is going to happen tonight? I think a lot of these moves are going to depend on if agents and teams and organizations can kind of at least assume they know what's going to happen with some key players. Hardens, Westbrooks, people like that. Obviously, Houston's doing everything it can right now to convince James Harden that he needs to stick and ride out his career with Houston. Do I think he needs to do that? I do. I don't think that he needs to take the Kevin Durant route and say, I'm not worried about anything other than putting a ring on my finger because I've proven myself. Well, I think that winning a ring for an organization that you've helped build is part of that. You want to prove yourself, that's part of what you need to do. Same thing Jordan did. Same thing Isaiah Thomas helped do in Detroit. I can't stand the man, but it is what it is. Um, The same thing that, I'm sorry to say, LeBron James did. Uh, When he came back to Cleveland the second time, he knew, listen, I've proven myself enough to say if I need somebody around me, you're going to put them around me because it's going to benefit you. You're not going to ask questions. You're not going to say, well, the analytics say this. No, this is who I want around me. These are the reasons why, and this is who you need to put around me. And and they did it, and they won. Um, I think that the team right now that has probably – has impressed me the most with the way that they've gone about not necessarily rebuilding, but staying relevant and continuing that upward trajectory has been Miami. I said that, uh, you know, during last season before the shutdown, of course, after the shutdown, when they made it all the way to the finals, um, they didn't go target any big, big superstars. I mean, obviously Jimmy Butler, but he's not someone that is, looked at like a LeBron or like a KD and guys like that and look at what they've done. And if anybody thinks that Miami was a flash in the pan and they're, they're not going to continue to have success, they're out of their minds. Miami right now with Pat Riley, you know, at the wheel, they're going to find success again. And it's only going to go up barring that everyone that they need stays healthy right now with Minnesota. I don't think any of these top four guys are exactly what Minnesota needs. But if you look at any of them, I think that what they need is they need another, they they need more ball control, which I don't think, again, if you look at any of these guys and you talk about somebody dribbling, you immediately think LaMelo Ball, but he's a street baller. He's an N1 player. I mean, he's not very talented. Obviously, if you want to look at just talent, his brother is worlds ahead of what he was. He's one that wants to flamboyantly go down the court, shoot from half court like Curry does, when at least Lonzo knows how to fundamentally play the game at a different level. But again, LaMelo is also a small guy. I mean, he's very small compared to what your typical NBA standards would be. So let's look at Vegas real quick and what they have at this very moment and their odds. So right now, LaMelo Ball is minus 210 to take the number one overall pick. 
Anthony Edwards is actually, whoa, Anthony Edwards moved down. So it's James Wiseman, which is uh, right now at plus 165 to go second over, well, it's second to go first overall. Um, and Anthony Edwards is plus 650. And then, um, I mean, after, I mean, honestly, you, you've got Denny after that at plus 7,500. He's not going to go first overall, no way. Um that's what you're looking at in that top three. So you know Minnesota's going to take one of them. If I had to say, forget who's getting the number one pick, who do I think out of this year deserves the number one overall pick, I would say Anthony Edwards does. And I would say that James Wiseman needs to come in after that. I don't even think LaMelo Ball needs to go top ten or in the first round, but we know that he's going to. So taking in the fact that I'm not going to be naive about it, know that the boy's going to go, you know, not only in the first round, but he's going to go in the top five and he, you know, there's chances are he's going to go first overall. And if he doesn't, he'll be in that top three. I'm going to have to say that, you know, yeah, I think that Anthony Edwards deserves it. And that's, who's going to be my pick to go first overall. And if he doesn't, then we will know then what's going to end up happening with Minnesota is they're taking LaMelo Ball for two reasons. Number one, they're crossing their fingers and hoping the kid really is some, you know, star child, or that they can leverage him to go to one of, you know, the more shooting-minded teams, which he's not going to go to Houston. He could end up in New Orleans, but... A team like that versus a team that worries about all-around fundamentals, which I'll give that to Minnesota. Um, one thing that I see about Anthony Edwards is he's a big guard, and he's probably the biggest that we've seen in the last three or four years come out of the draft, come out of college. And there's a lot of teams that are, have a need for those big-bodied guards. One of the questions is, because he isn't a very strong three-point three-point shooter being that he is a guard he's going to have to shoot the ball more from you know outside than he was required to do at Georgia because in college those big body guards can obviously be playing center or at least be at least be playing the power forward position he's not going to be a big guy when he gets to the NBA and realizes that everybody's his size were much bigger. So he will be the typical size of a big body guard, which even in situations where you've got guards that are bigger than, you know, your Curry's, your Derrick Rose's, your, um, your Jimmy Butler's, those type of guys, he's going to be, he's not going to be able to drive in in the NBA like he was able to do in the SEC in college. He's going to have to force himself to shoot outside, or they're going to force him to. So the question is going to be, and what teams need to ask themselves is, can he become, can, number one, can he get down to shooting at three-point range from the NBA? Can he not only get used to it, but perfect it in ways where he is trusting of himself and the team trusts him to take those three-point shots versus just dumping the ball off? So, again, I don't think he's the right fit for Minnesota. But I think where Minnesota sits right now, they're not looking for anything spectacular in the next three years. Put him in. Let him be a starter as long as health-wise he's ready. Let him be a starter. See what he does. And you will have a lot more leverage with a player like that than you would a LaMelo Ball or probably even a James Wiseman because you could move him off to a team that would be more in need of a big body guard like that um, and somebody that just probably is going to need a little more time to break out in the NBA. Um, so my pick, I'm going to say Edwards goes first overall uh, because that's who I believe deserves to go, and I hope there's enough common sense in the NBA to realize that it's not LaMelo Ball. Um, but I'm going to say he goes in the top three. James Wiseman is also someone that goes in the top three. Um, I would say somebody that I think, may end up outside the top five that I think should go uh, probably fourth overall is Anyika from, or Anyika, however you want to pronounce it, from USC. Big body guy. I know he's coming off of a toe fracture. I think it's big toe. But from what I've read, it will not affect him to be able to start um, when the NBA starts in late December. I think that he is probably out of everybody in this draft, or at least in the top five, 
probably more prone to have long-term success as long as he stays healthy in the NBA. I just think he's more built for it. Somebody that I want to talk to as a North Carolina fan is Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony was being talked about last year. I mean, right now he's not even being talked about going in the first round. I think that being the – this is where I truly – and I think there's two teams that he could fit perfectly with right now, show that he belongs, and – Start making a name for himself and making a spot on the team. Um, there's, Or there's one place that I think could benefit him even if he's not a starter. That place would be Golden State. Because Cole Anthony likes to play as fast as he does, he's a good ball handler. One thing that he is that you don't see enough of anymore is true ball handlers, true point guards, somebody that can truly run the team up and down the court. On the offensive side of the ball, when a point guard gets there, the true job of a point guard is to call the play, set his guys up, and initiate how that ball gets moved around before the shot is taken. And that's what a point guard does. How often do you see that in the NBA? Almost never. You might see it with LeBron from time to time, but it's usually when LeBron's just calling somebody to get out of his way so he can go dunk. But... You don't even see it in college much anymore. You have three or four guys that can run point. That means they can dribble and get the first pass off or take a three-point shot. Cole is a true point guard. And I think with as fast as he plays, as long range as he is, and as capable of being successful at, I think that he would be all right at Golden State. Question is, would he start? The an There's two answers to that. The, the quick answer would be no, and that's assuming that Steph – and Clay are healthy. If they're playing, Cole is not, and rightfully so. He's not ready. But that means that he can be on a practice squad and being put up against guys like Clay and Steph every day, which will only perfect the style of player that he is. And then after two or three years, if he hasn't made enough impact on that organization, and if they haven't made enough changes, well, he's not going to last there. But that puts him on tour enough to be able to be scooped up by a team that's going to utilize his talents in the best way. Or Clay or Steph go down to injury and he's ready to go in there and take them their spot over. Whether he has true success at it or not remains to be seen. But I think based on his style of play, if he was going to go there as a number two guy in any position, in any point guard position, that would be his best shot. As far as coming in and assuming he's going to play year one, the two spots for him, um, the the weaker of the two spots, I would say, would be Chicago. And that would be because of not only they're in desperate need of ball handlers and point guards, he has Kobe White there, somebody that would be, you know, both played under Roy Williams. Um, even though Cole only did it for a year, it doesn't matter. They've got that Roy Williams and that North Carolina mentality. They're going to come in with that common ground from the start. And that's going to start a duo where if they can find success together, that could be long-term very successful duo that I would love to see as a Bulls fan. But where I think that Cole Anthony would actually probably find the most success would be as the number eight pick overall with the New York Knicks. I think they're getting number eight. Let me double check that. <laughs> yeah, they're getting number eight, and then I think they traded up to get number... 23 from somebody from the Jazz or the Nuggets, somebody. But I think that he would be a best fit with the Knicks. The Knicks going in, having some decent enough offensive names. And I think that right now what you're going to see with the Knicks is them focus more on their offensive production versus bigger bodies. They want to get that offensive production down where they're kind of going to go the route of the Phoenix Suns. We're not going to worry about defense. We're not going to worry about big bodies. We're going to worry about being able to offensively keep up with these higher scoring teams in the league. With your with your Golden States, of course, I'm going to use the Phoenix Suns as an example here. Phoenix, Houston, these type of teams, even Miami in a lot of situations. Um, Atlanta's a high-scoring team when they're not playing a good defensive team uh, because of people like Trey Young. So when you have stuff like that, when they go off of that mentality, you're going to see them put together – 
Uh, five really good and really dynamic offensive players. I think he could run the true point position there with not being contested by somebody trying to take his job or him coming in trying to take someone else's job. Worry about shooting uh, shooting guards around him on the other side, power forwards, and then, of course, don't worry about the defensive and the big bodies in a couple of years once they know that even though they're not going out there and winning games and making the postseason – are the Knicks the type of team that could play a high-scoring, fast-paced, you know, high-flying offense that puts up 120 points a game? Can they keep up with them? And then fall apart in the last few minutes when the little bit of defense that's played is what becomes their Achilles heel. That's fine. If they can do that and they can stay with a team like Phoenix does. Remember how much money we made off of Phoenix last year? Betting them as underdogs. Over and over and over, betting the overs when it was time to do so. Really, really clamping down on a team like that. If they can do that and they can find success with it in 2021, they can perfect it over 2022. And then starting in 2023, when they are extending contracts, they're getting bigger bodies and they're getting bigger names because let's face it, the Knicks are still the most powerful organization in sports. Yeah, you could say the Cowboys, but right now, if you went in and you were going to buy a professional sports organization and you said, I want to buy the most expensive one out there, what would you think it would be? The Cowboys or the Yankees? It's the New York Knicks. Buy almost a billion dollars. So don't think they can't spend money. And don't think that playing in that New York market in Madison Square Garden doesn't mean something to big names. They just don't want to come and be what you build around. They want you to build it up where they can come be the final puzzle piece when all of the foundation and groundwork's been laid. So I really think that Cole Anthony should be the eighth overall pick and go to the New York Knicks. That's what I believe. But again, a lot of people are going to want to know where my head is at for the NBA draft. Those are just my initial thoughts. Next video, um, the, the question that I keep getting is about Michigan and Jim Harbaugh and what I think is to come, what I think needs to happen. So that'll be on the next one. I'm going to try to do it later today so I can post it uh, tomorrow, Wednesday as well. And I'm also going to touch on something I've been asked about um, the future of North Carolina basketball, uh, Will Muschamp getting fired from the University of South Carolina, and talking about um, just looking ahead to 2021 and a lot of the pro sports. So, Going to talk about that on the next one, but if you want a free pick out of this one and you want to bet on this draft, mine right now, the overall betting favorite is by overwhelming margin, LaMelo Ball. I'm going to go with Anthony Edwards because I do believe that he sh he deserves the number one overall pick. Um, I don't think LaMelo should even be in the first round. No, I don't know that he should be drafted, period, but what do I know? And then I, if there's any way you can prop bet Cole Anthony to get picked eighth overall to go to the Knicks, you probably get some enormous plus money for that. It'd be worth the fun money because I think that's where he belongs, and I hope that's where he gets picked up for. Even though I'm not a Knicks fan, I'd love to see him in a Chicago Bulls uniform. I think that's where he belongs, and because I want success for everybody coming out of North Carolina, I hope he goes where I, he can find the most success. So, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the, the draft breakdown. And uh, if you have any other questions about it after the draft tomorrow, we can discuss it. But I'll be getting a couple more of these videos done. Make sure you tune into them because there will be free picks sprinkled into those as well. Uh, my next one will be on an NFL underdog for this coming Sunday. Thanks, guys. See you next time.